Much expected on the field at LSU, therefore much expected to keep up in the SEC when it comes to National Signing Day. We got Matt Moscone on the line after further review is the show, ESPN Radio, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, all sorts of different locations there in Louisiana. Matt, how you doing today? Hey, Mark. I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to dive right into the ranking because that's the first thing everybody gravitates to. Okay. Where, where's the class ranking number 12 in the nation for just about everybody else. Hey man, that's a great haul. Maybe some eyebrows raised, uh, in, in the LSU fan base. Doing this long enough. You realize that a recruiting ranking truly, uh, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? I'll give you an example. Weston Davis, uh, he's an offensive tackle that LSU flipped from Texas A&M. Uh, on three has him rated as the 20th best prospect in the country. Any position, number 20. ESPN does not have him in their top 300. So who do you, who do you believe? Who do you buy? I don't know. Um, what I will say is, uh, look, I, and obviously, if LSU's class, it, take LSU out of it, any school. If your class is top five, whatever it may be, you laud the rankings. If your class is lower than you'd hoped, it's more about, you know, quality and positions of need. It, you can't really judge a class until their time is done. Look at Texas A&M two years ago. They signed the best class ever. What, what did that get them? Uh, a lot of heartache, a lot of maybe outsized expectations. But I, I'm for this LSU team, Mark, the – the story isn't with this class, the ranking. It is the number of Louisiana prospects that they signed. Um, that had to be a focus for Brian Kelly. And it actually illustrates a pretty stark shift in focus from Brian Polian, who Brian Kelly brought with him from Notre Dame as his recruiting coordinator, to now Frank Wilson, who is deeply rooted in the state of Louisiana. Got Matt Moscona here breaking down LSU football. For us, Uh, we always appreciate the conversation with Matt. And uh, as soon as you made that comment about uh, staying at home, bringing in those top athletes, I went trying to find the number 17. That that is a sizable number, even for the talent in Louisiana. So consider that a year ago, LSU signed 10 players out of the state of Louisiana. This year, 17 of the 27. They've got nine of the top 10 prospects in the state signed. Um, When Nick Saban came here in 2003, Mark, it was one of the things that became sort of a a rallying cry, which has put the fence around the state. Nick Saban started it, and every coach since has tried to continue it. And a lot of people may maybe know this more. Maybe many don't, because I know not everyone really follows. most. I think most college football fans are, are recruiting fans like two days out of the year. Uh, you know, overwhelming. You have your people who love recruiting, but for the majority, it's sort of niche. And Louisiana per capita produces more Division I talent than any other state in the country per capita. Obviously, states like Florida, and Georgia, California, Texas, which are massive states, produce more uh, cumulative. But per capita, this is a, as talent rich a state as there is in the country. And LSU is the only power five. And for years, Players like Warwick Dunn, Major Applewhite, uh, Marshall Falk, players that were – Louisiana guys got, got – this state got pillaged by great programs in the 90s when LSU was down. And now it's it's not that way. You keep the Jamar Chase and Justin Jeffersons in Louisiana, and, and LSU's been able to win as a result of it. Um, so, yes, uh, when, when – uh, long-winded answer, but when Brian Polian came – having recruited Notre Dame, you have to recruit nationally at Notre Dame. Look at their class. I think there's 15 states represented in Notre Dame's class. That was the perspective that Polian and Kelly came here with. The switch has been, okay, we don't need to fly to Las Vegas to sign a three-star cornerback. You can throw a rock from LSU's campus and hit a half dozen three-star cornerbacks. And I think that was really the focus of this class, was, was rebuilding this roster around the state of Louisiana. Matt, you just mentioned that position, cornerback, and I'm going back to our last conversation, and you made something to this type remark that you couldn't remember when the last time LSU was this deprived of talent in the secondary. 
whether it be in the transfer portal or, and, and there's obviously a lot of work to be done there, we will see in the next few months, even through spring practice, was that addressed? Well, they signed four cornerbacks, um, three of them from the state of Louisiana, one from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, which is two hours away. And Mark, I'll tell you, you know, one of the, th- go back to the theme again, this is the theme of this class. LSU had two cornerbacks committed. One was Andre Evans out of, um, out of Nashville and Kai Bates out of Orlando. And those kids got processed out of this class and they decided to sign local kids instead. And, you know, Bernard Causey's a three-star who's, you know, in the composite, the number 735 player in the country, but he's a long rangy corner from JFK in new Orleans. And Frank Wilson decided I like that kid from new Orleans better than the prep school kid from Nashville. And it's time will tell if they're right or wrong. Time will tell if they hit on these guys or not. But when you're evaluating the class and looking at the theme and the manner in which they went about building this class, that's it. They said, let's go get dudes who grew up wanting to wear that uniform, wanting to play in Tiger Stadium, would give their arm to do so. And let's go develop those dudes that are from here that are going to stay here. Um, So did they fix it? I don't know, Mark. I mean, next year, a big part of it's going to be, you know, you got a couple of guys that were injured this year that you'll be getting back. J.K. Johnson, Zy Alexander, you know, are, can you really count on two guys coming off a season ending injuries? Don't know. They played a lot of freshmen this year at cornerback out of necessity. Have those guys improved? We'll see. Can any of the young guys coming in be ready to go as freshmen? I don't know. I mean, I'll tell you, they wanted to Cameron Richardson, who's a senior starter from Mississippi State from North Louisiana, who instead went to Ole Miss. That's a that's a big blow for LSU in this transfer class. They wanted that kid. He would have been a starter next year for LSU. Instead, he's playing at, at another SEC school. So I'm not telling you they fixed the problem, Mark. I, I don't the time will tell as we see how this develops. What I am telling you is they had a plan to address that position and they've added bodies that they think can play. So we'll see if it works. And obviously the biggest factor in all of this is that the transfer portal has become like NFL free agency. And I would even go beyond that. It's become more than a supplement for a lot of teams. And we're not going to know for a few years when people start running the numbers to see what is a good retention rate for a class. We have no idea at this point, whether you keep 75% two years from now or 30%, whatever that is. We don't know. So obviously the transfer portal is a huge portion of this. Uh, Are there particular positions, players? Obviously they've signed the three that, uh, that you're looking at right now. Right. So it's also interesting when you consider um, what Brian Kelly inherited, right? So if you, if you rewind just a little bit for the context, you know, sometimes people forget, Brian Kelly inherited a not a great situation. Uh, the last two years of Ed Ogeron, LSU was a combined 11 and 12, and they played that last bowl game with 39 scholarship players. So he inherited a mess. So the last two years, LSU signed double-digit players out of the portal out of necessity because they had to get back up to 85 scholarship players. They had to get their roster back. So – they did that the past two years, but they feel like they're at a point now where they've built and steadied the roster where they don't have to build through the portal, but they can supplement with the portal. And I think that's what they've done. So the three players they've added, um, Jordan Gilbert to safety, who was from, look, U High. That U High's campus is on the LSU campus, Mark. He was a safety, a four-star that um, – would have picked LSU, but the previous staff was fired. There was uncertainty, so he went to AM and played two years there. And now he's coming back to LSU. Talked to Jordan yesterday, as a matter of fact. And he said, even when he was at AM, like he always still dreamed of getting back to LSU and wearing purple and gold. I mean, it's just a lot of kids in this state, that's what they grow up wanting to do. It's no different than being in Ohio and kids want to be a Buckeye. It's it's very similar. So they added Jordan Gilbert. Um, Xavion Thomas is a wide receiver from New Orleans who went to Mississippi State, not only a wide receiver, but a punt returner. LSU's punt return game has been a disaster the last two years. So he's an immediate help there. And then they added A.J. Swan at quarterback, which is, I think, interesting to a lot of people. You know, Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be LSU's starting quarterback, but 
you know, when they lost Walker Howard last year, they had a gap, right? So you've got a fourth year player in Nussmeyer, a redshirt freshman in Ricky Collins, and a true freshman in Colin Hurley coming in. So you're a turned ankle away from a redshirt freshman who's never played. So they needed to get depth at quarterback, and they did that with AJ Swan. So that's where they are now, but I, I don't suspect they're done in the portal either. Matt, I understand I'm stuck in the past, but when you put on LSU and Wisconsin on a line as a matchup, I think of Big Ten SEC pride. I think of the two games that they played where they split home and home at the two NFL stadiums. Both games were tremendous football games in different ways. LSU had the big comeback against the Melvin Gordon Wisconsin team in the second half. And then uh, there was a late pick, I think, off of, uh, oh, I can't think of. Yes, Brandon Harris. Very good. I knew you'd come up with the name, and I thought I was there at the last second. (laughs) I was there at Lambeau. (laughs) It happened right in front of me. (laughs) It was not a great day. The, the the trip at Lambeau, Mark, was incredible. The week was amazing. Being in Green Bay that day, it was an awesome trip. Like 40,000, 50,000 LSU fans went. It was all great until the game kicked off. Uh, anyway, but yes. It was a rock fight, sure. Yeah. yeah. It didn't need to be. That 2016 LSU team, if you ever get bored, go look at the roster from LSU. It was, that was the year Les got fired midseason. Go look at that roster, and you'll say, how in the world did that team – not win a national championship. Just if you get bored, go look at the 2016 LSU football roster. Look at the NFL guys on that roster. It's stunning. I will do that because I am the nerd that will follow up on that directive. But for me, again, I, I buy into the uniforms and the name brands and the different styles of football. And of course, if you're going to take two programs that do it very different ways, traditionally, at least Wisconsin and LSU were those teams. So I'm bought into this, but few are these days. Of course, Jaden Daniels will not play. Do we have any other significant opt-outs for this game? No, and that's kind of surprising, right? Um, great players don't play in bowl games anymore, and I get it. Uh, and I, J- Jaden's making the right decision, by the way. He's We've seen his draft stock catapult all the way to being a potential top 10 pick now. There's nothing for him to gain playing in this game. Um, but Malik neighbors, you know, Mark, I know I've belabored this point a bit, but, you know, talk about kids from Louisiana that want to play at LSU. Malik neighbors is going to be a top 10 pick. I think we all agree on that. He is, he was incredible. He is rising up everybody's draft boards. Malik neighbors is 22 yards away from becoming LSU's all time career leader in receiving yards. And he's going to play in the bowl game because he wants that record. It's a kid from the, from the, um, the Lafayette area, who that matters to him to be alone at the top of record books that include Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry and Wendell Davis and Josh Reed. So he's going to play. Brian Thomas is going to play. Yeah, it's it, Mark, it's bizarre. I mean, they, the only opt out is Jaden Daniels. I, I certainly would have thought there had been more, but somehow Brian Kelly and his staff got, got these guys committed to play in this rely a quest bowl at 11 a.m central on new year's day i think it's awesome i love it and i'm hearing those similar reports coming in from other teams where maybe we've hit a threshold where maybe we're we're obviously going to continue to see the opt-outs when they make sense uh, but maybe we've hit a threshold where guys are going to continue to maybe up their draft stock or they still have some pride in the program and and again like you i don't begrudge anyone who makes a career choice not not at all not at all uh speaking of quarterback garrett nussmeyer i assume is starting yes the game how do you project and there's much to be done and aj swan was signed toward 2024 how do you think this could shake out i expect garrett nussmeyer is going to be the starter they had a you know mark they had a decision to make with the portal Garrett has Garrett's going into his fourth year. It's kind of a Carson Beck situation, right? It's a little atypical to see a guy that's highly regarded sit and wait for three years, right? It just doesn't happen anymore. Um, you know, more than half of the starting quarterbacks in college football now are transfers. I believe this year was 55%. So Garrett's waited his turn, but you don't hand the job to anybody just because they waited, you know, Rewind the clock two years, Mark. Miles Brennan had waited four years for his shot. 
And LSU went and brought in Jaden Daniels, who beat him out, won the job, and ended up being the right call. So I think in bringing in A.J. Swan, they're bringing in someone who is going to compete with Garrett with the assumption that Garrett's likely going to win the job. You know, LSU had two choices. They were either going to go be competitive in the portal to try to get one of the top guys, a, a Dylan Gabriel or someone like that, and spend probably seven figures, or ride with Garrett Nussmeyer and bring someone in for experience depth. And they chose door number two. And uh, you know, Garrett is a physically gifted player. Son, I, I think everybody knows he's Doug Nussmeyer's son, so son of a coach um, from Louisiana, you know, born in Lake Charles, family still there. So this, I think, means a lot to Garrett. The thing he's got to work out, Mark, is decision making. He, I know it's cliche and everybody says, oh, the gunslinger, but it's, it's true. He will put the ball in harm's way. Um, you know, we got to watch bowl practice on Tuesday of this week. And when they were in, you know, team drills off, you know, ones against ones, first deep shot Garrett took, he threw a ball to Brian Thomas in double coverage. And it was, the route was undercut and, and intercepted. Like, that's a problem. It, it has been a problem for Garrett since he's been here. The ability is undeniable. The decision making is what has to improve, and that's what the focus is going to be for him this offseason. Folks, I'm going to give you an early Christmas gift here. Follow Matt Mascona on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Just follow him there, and then I think you can follow him to all his various platforms and obviously the radio show that's uh, supplied uh, through links and so forth that he provides every day from, I believe, noon to 3, correct? Central time? Uh, three to six central. So we're at six. Drive. Yep. Perfect. Uh, Matt, I certainly want to give you the floor to provide anything in regards to what you've got going right now and what people need to be looking out for. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Mark. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to be off next week for Christmas and take the last week of the year. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, I mean, we pump a lot of content. So I always say, Mark, if, if people can spell my name, you can find me. Uh, good luck with the vowels, but if you can spell it, it's at Matt Moscona on Twitter, X, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, everywhere, YouTube. Uh, we stream our show every day live on YouTube as well if you want live video. There's YouTube clips channels. I, I'm easy to find. Man, if you can spell my name, I am easy to find. I'm sure we can find an old video when we first started uh, doing these conversations where I screwed up your name. But I, I'm locked in now, Matt. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I think my wife still hasn't adjusted to, to the name change. We've been married for more than a decade now. So no worries, man. Those vowels get everybody now and again. Man, Merry Christmas. Enjoy the week off. Thanks, Mark. Merry Christmas, man. Always great to chat.